he liked acting. I can't say whether he was particularly one way or the other, particularly uh, like comedy roles or straight roles. Um, uh, he was good at both. He, he was his great hero was Sid Field, who was the big, uh, the big rev, uh, review performer of the time, the big comedy performer of the time. And of course, the tradition of everybody was music hall, because and variety. That was that was their world. That was what they watched. There wasn't any television in the thirties, so it was always big gestures. You were always dealing. People weren't mic'd up. You were dealing with big audiences. It was it was big, almost Chaplin esque stuff. So he had that ability in him. He was always doing. Sid Field's trademark was, and it always came him doing us doing a trip always doing a stage trip in whatever environment, whatever character he played. And my dad would do that a lot and he taught that to me. And he, we used to be, do big double take competitions where we'd, we'd constantly go <laughs> with each other. And uh, um, he, he, he could be very silly, my father. He could be, very, which I have to say I've inherited and I'm trying to tell my seven-year-old daughter how to do it. And, uh, and she says, oh, dear, you're being a little bit embarrassing. She says, my daughter says to me, which is slightly worrying because she's only seven. Um, I was hoping that she'd be entranced by my, my own comedy skills, but not particularly. Um, so I, 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 I'm not, I, I think he was, he was at home in both, but uh, he was very, he was, he was very good fun to work with because he was very friendly and lighthearted. He was always terribly good at, 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 at being friendly with the crew. He would always give everybody their time. He would always, he was, he was never grand. His big thing to me was, um, uh, you know, it would be nice to everybody. I, he, he was always nice to everybody anyway, but it wasn't as if it was, he wasn't trying too hard to be nice. Uh, he said, because, you know, you'll, you'll meet them on the way down. He said so, yeah. He's gone. Well, you certainly got to hand it to him. He's the greatest. It'll be uh, four pounds, 15 and six, miss. Needn't bother about the tip. I didn't really expect one. He was vague over whether he'd been in some films or not. He'd made so many. I recall I was watching TV round at our house in Barnes in my teens, and the 1950 Ealing comedy The Magnet appeared on the screen. You in this one? I asked him, raising my voice as he was next door in the kitchen. What? He shouted back, above the sizzle of egg and bacon. He loved a fry-up, did my dad. He'd been a prisoner of war for five years in Poland. This was the one meal all the prisoners pined for. So we did a lot of fry-ups with white bread. They never had white bread in the prison camp, so he couldn't get enough of it when he was home. They had black bread, which incidentally is actually more nutritious than the white bread and costs a huge amount now, but it's what the white bread represented, isn't it? Home, hope, freedom. And they didn't have eggs or even bacon. So God knows what's constituted bacon and egg in the prison camp. Fried black bread in mud and sawdust, possibly. Hey, Fred, before we do the King Street job, can we stop off for a bit of a nosh? I'm starving. Yeah. Me too, Charlie. There's a cab round the corner. We'll stop there. Right. <coughs> do you know this guy, Fred? Yeah. I'll tell you something. Don't risk the sausages. <laughs> so this was a special meal for him. Incidentally, he was, he'd always get annoyed if anyone ate their food too quickly. Oi! Lobby lad, where's the fire? He would say to me as I gobbled down some muesli. Or, I don't think that piece of food saw your teeth. Chew, 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 boogie. He'd almost starved in prison camp, and according to him, you should savour every mouthful. In his autobiography, which, as I said, I found recently in my mother's loft, the text is peppered with menus, descriptions of grub and sequences of courses and pub and restaurant visits on TV shows and films are as relevant to him as to who was in the cast with him. The standard of the film catering was terrifically important, as it is to most actors. I have friends who have spent a few weeks on a film and increased their waist size by three inches deliberately so that they can save money when they've left the job and live off their fat reserves. <laughs> Lines in his book like, lunch was soup, scampi, duck, peaches in brandy, good wine and coffee, ordinary and Irish have a huge significance, knowing that he came back from the Second World War, where he'd been a prisoner of war for five years. A self-conscious, thin-as-a-rake individual who was initially scared of taking his shirt off for fear his emaciated look would be laughed at, especially by girls. He says in his book, for a long time I was saddled with that scrawny, or to put it kindly, very lean look. That was why I did my bathing early in the morning. I had this complex about my thinness, so I avoided undressing and showing my body in front of others. Mind you, it was different in the dark. For most of his career until he gave up smoking in the late 70s and the cakes and steroids, 
piled on the pounds. He was a very thin man and was known and cast for this specific look, fueled by bacon and egg, with lashings of white bread. And of course, there was the tea, cups and cups of it. Because in the prison camp, they used tea that had been used and used and used and used. So it got weaker and weaker and weaker. 16 times you'd use the same tea leaves. And then there was the milk, or should I say, there wasn't the milk. They had ersatz condensed milk if they were lucky. Cows were not a feature of prison camp existence. Consequently, tea subsequently figured enormously in his life. And biscuits. You couldn't get a McVitie's digestive in prison camp for love or money. Oh, here, Annie. Mr. West would like a slice of that cake, I'm sure. Very sweet tooth has Mr. West. But then I always think men like sweet things much more than women, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> but it's uh, like chasing pretty girls. <laughs> like bees round a honeypot, eh, Bert? <laughs> right. 